Today we're zooming in on the two big players in every ecosystem, biotic and abiotic components. These might sound like tricky science words, but they're actually pretty simple. Biotic refers to all the living things, and abiotic refers to all the non-living things that make up an ecosystem. Together they interact to keep the ecosystem healthy and functioning. Let's break it down. First, let's talk about biotic components. These are the living things in an ecosystem. Plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and even the tiniest microbes. Everything that's alive falls into this category. For example, in a forest, the biotic components would include trees, birds, insects, mushrooms, and squirrels. Each of these living organisms plays a specific role in the ecosystem, whether it's producing food, breaking down dead materials, or keeping the population of other species in check. Now, onto the abiotic components. Abiotic means without life. So these are all the non-living parts of the ecosystem. This includes things like sunlight, air, water, soil, and temperature. These things might not be alive, but they're just as important as the biotic components. Without them, life couldn't exist. Think about how sunlight helps plants grow or how water is needed for animals to survive. Even the type of soil can determine what plants grow in an area. So, what kind of interactions happen between biotic and abiotic components? Let's start with plants. Plants, which are biotic, rely on sunlight, which is abiotic, water, which is abiotic, and nutrients from the soil, which are also abiotic, to grow. This interaction is crucial because plants are producers. They're the base of the food chain. Without these abiotic factors, plants wouldn't be able to produce food and the entire ecosystem would collapse. Now, let's look at animals. Take a fish, for example. Fish, which are biotic, live in water, which is abiotic, and they depend on the temperature of the water and the availability of oxygen, which is abiotic, to survive. In return, fish might feed on smaller organisms, like algae or insects, which are biotic, and those interactions help keep the ecosystem balanced. Even the smallest organisms interact with abiotic components. Bacteria in the soil, which is biotic, break down dead plants and animals, recycling nutrients into the soil, which is abiotic. This process enriches the soil, making it more fertile for new plants to grow. So, even though we can't always see it, biotic and abiotic interactions are happening everywhere. These interactions are what keep ecosystems in balance. If one abiotic factor changes, like a drought reducing the amount of water available, then the whole ecosystem can be affected. Plants might die, animals that depend on those plants will struggle, and the whole food chain can be disrupted. Similarly, if a new species, which would be biotic, is introduced to an area where it doesn't belong, it can upset the balance by outcompeting native species for resources like sunlight or water. So what's the big picture? Biotic components, the living things, interact with abiotic components, the non-living things, in countless ways. They rely on each other to survive and thrive. Whether it's the trees soaking up sunlight or animals depending on water to live, every part of an ecosystem plays a role in the larger web of life. That's it for today's lesson. Next time you're in a park, a forest, or even your backyard, see if you can spot some biotic and abiotic components and think about how they're interacting to keep the ecosystem running smoothly.